Hello everyone and welcome back to BC Labs. I am so very excited to be bringing you this update today. It finally happened. They have released V67, at least to the PTC, for the Quest 3, and we finally have the new window design. Now I don't expect this to be the final form and they're gonna do more and more tweaks and improvements, but this is really a major step forward. If you were thinking that you really wanted something more along the lines of an Apple Vision Pro, this finally brings the Quest 3 pretty close in line to what Apple is offering. Of course, we can't magically add eye tracking, but to be able to pick up and move around individual applications and resize them is a major step forward. If you're already a fan of the channel, you've probably heard me rant and rave on almost every Quest video about how bad I wanted this feature. One such example is using Collabora Office right here. You're able to expand it to whatever size you want, hook up a USB keyboard or use the virtual keyboard, and start using this thing like a word processor on a computer. I definitely would recommend using a Bluetooth keyboard though. This is definitely better than the chicken pecking you can do on the virtual one. Now, some of you may have done the Vision Pro demo in person like I did, or watched some video footage of it. So this feature might remind you a little of that. You're able to take a single application and bring it into this zoomed in mode, but look at that. There is an ambient darkness setting. I personally like the pass-through mixing that is done on the Vision Pro, but I could see them kind of ramping up into that. And in the meantime, this still allows you to have some immersive VR surroundings, but also kind of control the, the amount of overwhelmingness it could provide. On top of everything else, I don't think this is a earth-shattering difference, but I think this is a nice little feature that brings us closer in parity to what some of the competition has done. And it's kind of nice if you're trying to use it in a quiet environment to kind of maybe focus in on some work or knock out a paper. As soon as I got this update today, I started playing around with it and I've noticed some limitations. So it appears that you're only allowed to have two floating windows that, you know, go anywhere. And then you're limited to three attached windows in your, you know, your console or your main interface. So this is a limitation. It looks like five total windows slash applications. But for most things, that's still plenty, I'd say. And so far, most of the window streaming apps are pretty much limited to three to five uh, windows anyway. So this kind of falls in line with the expectations from, you know, those desktop streamers. So I'm a bit disappointed, but I can see this improving over time with future updates. I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. I'm just so excited right now, and I'm going to take these wins where we get them. So this right here is kind of like what I was hoping for with augments, being able to put a big screen image on your wall and like a TV. In this case, I just have a YouTube video playing with some music, but you know, the possibilities are endless. Using your favorite streaming service and just throwing it up on the wall like a TV is just a great option. Now, as excited as I am, there are a few more limitations that I've found. So for example, I use InShot for some of my video editing, and I've been really hoping to use it on my headset. Unfortunately, so far, it seems like one of those apps that is still not properly supported. Now, I don't know if that's on Meta's side or if it's on InShot's side, but you can't scale the UI properly. And I don't know if this is on Meta because I've actually got it to resize, but it doesn't actually resize the contents of the display to the window. And this is the exception, not the rule, because I played around with probably five or six of my side-loaded applications, and they did not have this issue. There are scaling issues on some of them, but not quite like this. Although a bit disappointing, I'm hoping this is fixed in future updates. And again, if we move towards this Horizon OS concept and we get like a third-party app installer for Android apps, or if Meta lets more publishers and app creators onto the store, or I guess rather gets them onto the store by enticing them, we might see some of these issues get fixed. Now in the name of kind of showing off all of the capabilities here, you have the Steam Link app, which you can sideload to stream games from the PC. Not the Steam Link app that is for VR only, although I think they're beta testing a 2D mode for that already. All in all, a major improvement. Now, I did notice that generally, if you're farther away from the, uh, the window that you're trying to adjust, it just moves it in and out. Where you can't really tilt, which is something I was frustrated about at first, until I started fiddling with it a bit more. And apparently, by dragging it closer to your hip, it starts to tilt. 
In either situation, it's a perfect use case where you can throw a giant screen on the wall and stream your PC to that screen versus having to force it into that curved mode to be able to resize it. Now, I did do some shorts on this in the past, but using your headset for productivity is finally more feasible. So, for example, you have the A code uh, text editor slash IDE, and you can pop it out, expand it, hook up a Bluetooth keyboard, and write Python code. Now, of course, I generally don't do development on Android because your options for Git and other tools are more limited. And, of course, it's just not the de facto um, platform. You don't have things like VS Code, which I enjoy using a lot. You don't have the stronger IDEs like Visual Studio or Eclipse. But it still opens up the door a little bit. And in the past, I've shown similar features with the Godot game engine, right? So being able to utilize the headset as a portable PC is becoming more and more attainable. We still need a officially supported or a semi-unofficially supported uh, third-party store, or at least being able to install from unknown sources without dev mode, unless they snuck that in there on me and I didn't catch it. But we've come so far that I'm absolutely ecstatic. I've literally been rebooting my headset and refreshing the settings page every like few hours to try to get this update. So I'm so excited. I'm so excited to be able to bring this video to you and show it to those who are not on the PTC. I might be able to do a demo here if I haven't forgotten how to use Python. <laughs> anyway, so. And even though this is not the general use case, I just appreciate that it's possible. Now, one important thing to note is the existence of the Aurora store. And there's other options like F-Droid for open source tools. I think APK Pure and some of these other websites have stores as well. Although Aurora store specifically essentially scrapes the Google Play Store without having to have it Google Play services on the device. In some situations, it's caused me some issues where it kind of quirks out, but when it works, it works wonderfully. I've been able to sideload apps directly from this and install them once you've given it permissions, which it prompts you for. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like the Quest, as far as I've poked around, has a permissions manager or at least a formal one. So you kind of have to force some of these prompts to get it. I'm guessing it's buried somewhere and I just haven't found it yet, though. But yeah, so far I've been really enjoying this and I've been able to use it with Telegram and some other apps just to kind of make more use out of my headset. Now, not to continue to point out little issues and problems that I've had, but the Discord app, for example, for some reason the scaling is just a little off where I can't join any voice chats. And I can't figure out if some settings are being missed. I've tried rescaling it different ways. But, but I can't get that menu to show up. So whatever permissions or settings are unaccessible, it won't let me join any voice chats. So i got to get that sorted. But anyway, despite the little bit of negativity here and there, I cannot stress this enough how exciting and how much of a game changer this is for these headsets. And it really makes me excited for if they release this Quest 3S that's supposedly coming that so many people will have access to this Apple Vision Pro level of interface, or at least almost as good, without having to shell out 3500 bucks. But if you have any questions or if I missed anything, go ahead and give me a shout out in the comments. And uh, go ahead and like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.